we're on. We're on. Oh, we gotta go. Okay, we'll call the <clears throat> May, May 18th. June, June. June 18th meeting <laughs> to order. Thanks. We'll begin with the pledge 2020. Of Congratulations to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. I guess I better put my glasses on. Yeah. And would you call the roll, please? Mr. Perkovich. Here. Mr. Tiedemann. Here. Here. Mr. Varga. Here. Mr. Cicero. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Mr. Hatton. Here. Mr. Snow. Here. Do you entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of the May 28th meeting? So moved. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Hatton? Yes. Mr. Snow? Yes. Okay, we have four public hearings this evening. The format we follow for the public hearings will allow the applicant an opportunity to tell us what they want to do at that location. Then those wishing to speak in favor are afforded an opportunity. Then those wishing to speak against are afforded a similar opportunity. So with that in mind, should use permit to allow daycare center at 9399 Minner Avenue. Is that applicant here, Larry? I do not see that applicant. If okay. they were there, they could type a question in, in the Q&A section, so we know they're there. Okay, we'll give her a second or two. Okay, that's, that's a couple seconds, so let's move on. We'll table that one for the time being. In addition, permit to allow retail sales from a tent not associated with the principal use of the property at 7850 Minner Avenue. Is that applicant here? Once again, I do not see that applicant here either. If they're out there, please type in the Q&A section so we know you're there. How about number three, Larry? Do you see that applicant? Yes. Okay. In addition, use permit to allow a drive through facility at 7787 Reynolds Road by Chipotle. Go ahead and tell us what you want to do at that location. Good evening. This is Robert Abramovich from 7787 Reynolds Investors. Um, we own the former Bravo building, which Mission Barbecue is currently a tenant. We also developed the Starbucks next door. The, um, the first proposal before you for a um, pickup window I think we'll be talking about um, the second part of the meeting is the exterior facade and site improvements, but is to add a pickup window with a drive through lane to that building. Um, it's like living this over to the slide. So um, the pickup windows are probably better shown on the elevations, but uh, it's at about the midpoint of the north side of the building that faces sheets. Right, right where Miss, where Larry's uh, hand was there. Um, to do so, it would be eliminating approximately seven stalls in the rear and one in the front. The stalls on the north side along sheets would be angled as shown, and we would provide a 18-foot um, one-way drive lane, which is the minimum one-way drive lane permitted by the code in the city of Manor. Uh, Larry, if you can scroll to the maybe the elevation page, we can show a, a visual image of that side. The the um, from top to bottom here, the second elevation down, um, left to right. Those are two existing windows, and the third. Um, there's a good shot at it. But the it's a pickup window. So Chipotle is um, going to a pickup, not a so a traditional drive-through. You order at the rear of the building or on the side of the building. Your order is prepared, and you you pull through the Chipotle or the drive-through lane and, and pick up your food. Chipotle is doing a pickup window, which is um, you would order online or on your app, and you would go through the pickup. Uh, lane and pick up your food without exiting your car. 
So in addition to that, um, Larry, if you can scroll back to the site plan, there's two um, parking stalls that are dedicated just after the pickup window in the event that, and the, there's the two right there, Larry, where your hand is, um, that they're order is not ready, they can pull through as to not back up traffic and wait in the um, Chipotle Lane dedicated spaces as shown. Uh, that's all I have for the drive through portion. Um, also with me on the call, if there's any questions, um, Daniel McDonald with Vocon, he's the landlord's architect. Matt Weber with uh, Weber Civil Engineering, he's landlord's civil engineer. Julie Kortich, the design manager from Chipotle, and Denise Polk from Red Architecture. She is the architect for Chipotle. So you got a full house. I, I think so. House. I think they're here. <laughs> so so yeah, I, just don't, I only have Julie unmuted. Okay. So there are two stip there's two conditions under the uh, CUP for the drive through. You agree with those two provisions? Uh, I'm scrolling. I'm getting to those. Hang on just a second. Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment about that condition? Sure. Uh, uh, Bob, under condition uh, number two, uh, the light pole location at the end of the drive lane, uh, we've noted yeah. based on what the site plan shows, it shows that it's it has proposed paint striping. But when you're actually yeah. out on when you're actually out on site, it's in an island now. Um, and we actually we do have a photo of that. So I guess. Just looking for you to clarify, is it going to yeah. stay on the island or is the no. island being removed? I talked to um, Mr. Decker yesterday about about some of the comments and, and we'll we'll slide that into that island, into the middle of the island. So we will move that um, light pole, which was the second condition, and get rid of those bollards. And then the other condition, I'm going to probably defer to Julie. Um, Julie, condition number one associated with the um, pickup window had to do with the clearance bar menu board and any directional signage that shall be sh finished painted to match the window and door framework. You're going to slide the light pole to the middle of what island? Uh, so that there's that striped island that I, I can't move the cursor, but it separates the two lanes. Yeah, we'll say north three feet. I would say four feet would put it in the center of that island, and then I will work with. Um, how about the, how, you know, you see the island north of that, on the yeah. property line. Can you slide it to there? Uh, get it out of the, just get it out of the flow of traffic altogether. We could do that. We're going to actually look at that the hatched lane that is between the drive-through and the island that you're on, at mm -hmm. potentially curbing that, and landscaping it. And then we could we could put that light there. I guess I, I would I would say this. I would like to look at the photometrics and what kind of spread we get in, in one of the islands, but we will put it in a curved island, and so that it can't be hit by a vehicle. If that's fair, Larry, those photos that um, I sent you or heard, can you pull those up? Because there is actually a photo of this particular light pole. Okay, let me. I think it's cropped. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought we had it. Okay. I mean, I'm going to look on this to make sure. I thought I had them all. There's a good shot on Google of it. Yeah. Well, you can see, see it actually in this that? picture here. It is, but it is in an yeah. island. We, we had some right. pictures taken just this week. Here. It's in the corner field. It's dark. Yeah, it's in the corner there. Can you pull it up on Google? Because there's a shot of the lot on it. We do have a picture of it. That light pole? Yep, right yep. So I guess it's already in an island and, and that was the question was is that island going to stay? Or are you redoing that completely? Yeah that the, the dry, that that lane comes right through there. So okay. okay. Yeah. So we'll move it and we'll put it in an island. I, I would just um, like to look at the photometrics and make sure we can get enough spread across the front. That that's eliminating the the storefront as well, probably over to to or near the sheets property line. So, um, 
but we don't have a problem moving. You also referred to the uh, the architectural, the item number one, and I think the the information that we received were just general Chipotle design standards. But I don't, you know, it wasn't clear if what was in the photos that we received was in fact what was being built for the site. So, Larry, can you scroll to, it's page four of the landlord design requirements. I don't know if you have it. It's um, some Chipotle. Um, yeah, so right, I think right yep. there is, yeah, that's what you'd be looking at. Julia, if you're on, just real quick, the, the existing storefront system um, doors are a dark bronze anodized finish. So... Um, while some of the pictures that you see on this prototypical Chipotle have the gray or the charcoal gray finish, the existing storefront and door finishes at this location will remain and they're a dark bronze anodized. So I'll defer to Julie on the color, but I think they're going to be very close to this brown or dark brown color. So actually, um, I mean, that is also, that's an option. Um, what we would prefer to do and what's closer to our trade dress would be um, to actually match that, that field color of the brick on the elevations. Um, I believe it's technically called Knight's Armor here, but it is closer to a charcoal color. Um, you know, we're certainly open to matching the storefront if we absolutely have to, um, but um, if we could match the, the brick, um, that would also be that would be preferable, but either way, we can certainly change the finish from the uh, what we have shown is a, a rusted, a rusted corton to to match. Questions? Well, I have other questions that the elevations they show us are not the ones that are being built. Which we, because we do have the three items right. still pertaining to the driver. Right. Well, can I ask a question? Chairman? Yes. Uh, we have this picture. I don't know if everyone can see it. Uh, it's the one that was in the set. It shows the corner, it shows a sidewalk. So the existing con construction is going to be altered. How, how close is the uh, driveway actually going to be to the face of the building? Because that shows a sidewalk there. For the drive lane, I, I guess I'm not sure which side, which site plan you're referring to, Larry. Maybe if you can scroll back to site plan so we can. And Larry, Jeff is uh, Mr. Varga is holding up the. They built it. Up the photos the that were provided. Okay. So, so the site plan shows the driveway right up against the face of the building. Correct. You, typically, we would install about a there. eight inch or twelve inch curb along the face of the building, protect, protect right. the vehicle from hitting the building. You have you have a door that comes right out into that driving lane. What, what is the function of that door? That's existing. If if you look, go back to the elevations. That door is going to be filled in. That's right. that's existing condition. So if you go back to the elevation, that door is, that door is gone. Okay. Well, I'm looking at the. All right. Well, then let, let me ask this question. It, 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 some of that. It, let me ask this question just uh, as a preliminary. This this photograph that we just had up. The the elevations and the the, the design of the building is going to be based on what's on the drawings, the Volkswagen yes, drawings, yes, and sir. not on what's built in the field right now. That's correct. We're gonna we're gonna walk through the modifications that we're gonna make to the building. Right. I, I just I was getting confused a little bit because I was seeing different things in different places where the where this window was gonna be and how it was gonna work. But we'll, we'll move on. No problem. All right. Can, can you pull up the uh, the uh, light pole slide? The one that shows the front of the building. Now, in a previous meeting, I asked the uh, representative of the landlord about replacing those street trees that were out in front, and he assured me that those would be replaced. 
I don't see him being replaced. Is there a comment you can make? Uh, if, if we were supposed to replace them and we didn't, I will make sure that they're done within the next 30 days. He told, he told us at the previous meeting that he had just let the contract for those at, at that meeting, the same day as the meeting. I know that we had a contract and we paid uh, Lake Erie Shores, I believe it's called, or Lake Erie something to do it. Gotcha. Mr. Chairman, oh. where, where are the trees? Because right now, obviously, there's a row of, row of um, shrubs. Were the trees to be in place of the shrubs and the shrubs removed? No, I think they were a combination of both of them. The street trees went away. The street trees were out there. They cut them off and just filled it in with mulch. Like maybe in the, those gaps there where there's where there's, there's no bushes, is what you're think, saying? Well, I'm not a landscape architect, so let's have John look at that and come up with an idea for that. And I think also at the dumpster site, and we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, at the dumpster site, you have a couple of dead bushes in and around the dumpster. We have a picture of that. And I think there's two trees there, there's July. There's July, there's it's up on the screen. Okay. So there were the row of trees, then those trees went away. We will, I'll make sure that they're replanted and I will circle back with Larry and Kathy um, and provide pictures so that we can assure you that they were replanted. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Cook. So I know this is just a drive through, but are, are we are, can we discuss the traffic pattern here? Kathy, or, or is that in another agenda, four or five? Uh, it's up to you. I mean, it, it's certainly applicable here. It's, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so right now you go through the drive through at Chipotle and you'll take a left turn and you'll go across Mission Barbecue. So to correct. go northbound, you can only go northbound at that pork chop. Correct. Or you circle through, go to Tyler, take a right on Tyler, and then go that's where you can go southbound on Reynolds. Well, the way it's set up now is all the traffic for Mission Barbecue or Chipotle is going to cross in front of Mission Barbecue. So is there a way that we can relieve some of that traffic by after you go through the drive through of proposed Chipotle? Can we do a right turn only in front of that where you have the Chipotle spaces so you can go northbound on Reynolds there instead of taking all your traffic in front of Mission Barbecue? People like a curb cut there. Because, you know, there was an issue with Starbucks. Now, there were Starbucks that were closed, but and they were double stacking over here and really getting in the way of the parking spaces for Mission Barbecue. And my fear is when you put a drive through in here, you know, you're gonna impact their parking out front because you're constantly gonna have cars going past it. Now, if somebody wants to go, you know, uh, south on Reynolds, they're gonna have to cross. They're gonna have to go in front of Mission. But anybody that wants to go north on Reynolds, instead of crossing Mission, they can go straight out the drive-through and then take a right turn only northbound. That's something we've thought about. Or can we do a curb cut on Reynolds? Mr. Mr. Cook, I we talked about that at our at our planning working group internally, and engineering I don't believe will support that because right there at Sheets is a traffic light, so that. Road cut would would probably be too close in proximity to there. Um, well, there's a left turn lane there. There's a middle lane that's a left turn only. And when I when I was there today, it kind of looked like, you know, what I'm trying to do is is not put all the traffic in front of Mission Barbecue. All right, the Taco Bell roll. Well, yeah, I mean, should we should we look at some sort of traffic study or is there something if you want to go yeah i mean let's just let's just think about this for a minute right if you want to go if you want to get into this facility you're coming south on on reynolds 
You have to go to Thailand. You have to go to Thailand. The only entrance you can get into is, is all the way back in the corner, the southeast corner of this property in with Thailand. If you're going north on Reynolds, there's a, a one way in, one way out, a, a, you know, right in, right out. You still, then you have to work your way around the it, back. Right, and there's no there's no arrows on the asphalt there now, and there almost should be a sign there on that right. If you're northbound on Reynolds, you want to go to Chipotle, you take a right turn in. There needs to be a sign there that says, you know, Chipotle drive through, you know, yeah. to rear or something. Well, could, and then you got to work your way around the back. You got to go all the way around. So there has to be enough arrows there. So people can get accustomed to this traffic pattern. And what I was trying to do was alleviate some of the traffic wrapping back around in front of Mission yeah, Barbecue. Even, even if you want to, uh, if you're leaving the drive through for Chipotle and you want to go south on Reynolds, you still have to go all the way back around, right. get onto Tyler, and then come back to the intersection. It's, it's a lot of traffic. But at least half the traffic wouldn't go in front of Mission if you, if you could go straight out and take a right turn. I understand. So you can't stop at all. Now, if you got, yeah, you know, six see. or seven cars stacked up there, the people that are in mission, they're going to have trouble backing out because people are going to be sitting there trying to make that right turn on Reynolds. And there's, you know, the traffic is dense on Reynolds. So it's not yeah, like no, you no, can no, get six no, cars out no, at no, one no, crack. It's, uh, it seems like it could potentially be a log jam, especially at lunch hour where people did you pull yeah I, i'm not sure i can i understand the, the problem with exiting there with shields right next to it uh the um the stoplight you know, yeah that you can't really exit into you have to be I'm a gonna ask the applicant, are there any, do you have any thoughts on that yeah well i guess as far as access to reynolds or right now that would be an engineering question that that we'd have to work with the the um the city on i know that there is a there is a drop right hand turn just after our property into sheets so sometimes introducing people entering and people trying to move over could be um is sometimes a in in the development or traffic world a no-no that drop right hand turn line starts right it looks like oh that's a sidewalk i'm sorry i thought it dropped in but um I mean, it's. I, I get it. It's tough, but you yeah. know, we also got to look out for an existing business that's there now. So yeah. So there's um with respect to the other question was directional signage, and I think if you go to the site plan, we do propose directional signage as soon as you come in off of Reynolds, and it was on the slide. Um, uh, it's in the island, the first island. Uh, Larry, if you can zoom in uh, at the southwest corner of Mission Barbecue, there's a note. I think it's on this plan um, in that island. We, it's maybe the notes on another plan, but you can see it right there to the left of the sidewalk. That's a directional sign, and it's the same one that we Julie talked about. That was that um, the brown color on the directionals, and I think it says Chipotle Mobile Order Pickup, and has a straight or with an arrow, so it directs traffic as they enter off of Reynolds um, back around the back of the building. Um, additionally, we could add signage as you're exiting the pickup lane and heading towards, uh, let's say Starbucks that directs southbound. So there's a, there's the stop sign right before the right in, right out, right there that we could, we could direct uh, Reynolds Road to turn left there so we can direct people. Um, and additionally, we, we typically would add um, arrows um, onto the pavement here when I know that there's some repaving and things that we need to do here. So, Kathy, did you have a question? Uh, what one of the comments that the engineer engineering department made was to provide appropriate one way do not enter signage at the exit of the northerly one way drive aisle. So I'm assuming that is exactly where you were speaking of. So if you were to enter off of Reynolds Road, you could not cross over and head north into uh, into that parking lot. You'd have to go around. So it does keep the flow of traffic from causing too much congestion right there. That was the that is a requirement, not a recommendation. It is a requirement of the engineering department. 
to provide that. So that will help at least with the direction. There's going to be a lot of signage that's going to be necessary to make sure that that's clear and the directional arrows on the pavement also because that is that is uh, uh, that is one way traffic there in front of the mission and, and Chipotle, correct? No, one, one way on the north side. No, only on the north side? Yep. Well, based on... Oh, okay. So then maybe his signage recommendation is up for the... I think that, it was at the end, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you could do that. I mean, you could do that where you prevent people from entering in from Reynolds and heading into that parking lot and going around the building. So some from Mission Barbecue to circle the building, the park there? Well, but there's parking lot right, there's parking there right is, there. But, there's but, parking um, where the shared parking is. Um, so there's, or they can, yeah, circle around. I mean, it's a way to keep the traffic moving in one direction, just as an idea. Let me ask the applicant, have you explored the possibility of doing an easement with sheets? Um, no, we haven't. I know that typically or historically they um, have some of the same product offerings that, that some of the tenants on our property do. And so that is usually um, typically the end of that conversation. Well, I mean, it's an, it, the question is... We have a grade change. It's pretty we're, significant. Go ahead. We're talking about internal circulation. I don't think, you know, we're... But we're talking about a lot of traffic circling around these buildings. Is all the tenants happy with that? I mean, do they feel comfortable? I, I, I mean, I, I assume they do because you're going ahead with this. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think when we talk about Chipotle and, and a pickup window, it's not a traditional drive-through where you have eight or ten or twelve cars stacking and ordering and then then waiting five minutes for for their food. You've got people who've ordered five or ten or fifteen or half an hour before and just don't have the luxury or the convenience or they have children or they don't want to get out of their car, it's raining and they want to just stay in their car. They've already paid for it. They pull through the through the pickup window and provide their name. They have their order ready and, and then they're out um, and they leave. So a, a traditional Taco Bell or McDonald's where you're, you're waiting because the guy in front of you hasn't ordered yet or, or is taking a while to order or their food's not ready. It's, it's a different model and a different system. Um, go ahead. Well, okay, let me ask a question then. I, I think yes, you just brought up something we weren't aware of or, or maybe needs further clarification. So this, this pickup lane is only for pre-ordered food? Yeah, Julie, can you confirm that? Yes, it's for, uh, you can't actually go and place an order there. You can place an order online or uh, on the app to pick Actually, up from there so you have a mess a menu board so people will just drive up and order so those people will still be waiting in line for their food right the people who order from the menu board the ones um, not we will we don't have a, a menu board per se um once you order on the app uh, it will give you an estimated time to pull up to the window and pick up your order um, generally we meet those those times within a few minutes and if not for some reason that's why we have the pull ahead spaces all right. so then I, I, I again this is for all pre-ordered food no Correct. one pulls, pulls off the street and pulls into the lane and orders something unless they've used nope. the app. it's all Correct. there's, all right. there's no menu board all right that, that that does then suggest there'll be less queuing up in the yeah at least for this for this drive through not a additional drive through it's actually in in going to free up parking for people who would have normally parked and gone in and got their food they can now go through the drive through or the pickup lane and not have to park and take up parking spaces so it will free up additional parking within the lot so i have a i have a question for julie Julie, did you agree that you're going to paint the windows and doors to match the paint on the menu board and directional signage? Uh, yes, we were going to try to coordinate um, both the patio railing and the clearance bar, et cetera, to, to match each other. And then 
uh, I guess what I said earlier was we would prefer to try to match the the color of the brick uh, that will be shown on the uh, elevations, which is our, one of our trade dress colors. Um, but uh, you know, if necessary, um, we we can alter that to to match the storefront, the existing yeah, storefront window. It's kind of, it's kind of tough because it's an existing color that we would have to match. Um, whereas the color we're painting is one of our trade dress colors. Kathy, does that satisfy you if they match it? Just, just, to, just to confirm, so the color matching is going to be with this Knight's Armor color and not the bronze color that was previously suggested? This is correct. Yeah. Do we want to move on to the uh, outdoor dining? We have to vote separately on each of these things. We, also, okay. we need to have a public portion. Yep. We need to have a public portion for each set. We haven't had a public portion for item number three. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? I do not see anyone out there. Okay. We'll close the public portion. I'll entertain a motion. Two conditions. Motion to approve with two conditions. Second. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Hatton. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Okay, now we got a conditional use permit to allow outside dining and or drink at 7787 Reynolds Road. Assuming that you're going to speak on behalf of that. Yes. Um, the uh, Larry's got the site plan open here. Um, I think along the storefront here, if, Larry, if you can zoom in maybe a little bit on that so we could, there you go. So approximately 11 and a half feet by um, I'd say two thirds of the frontage that you see there. We are showing the uh, Chipotle fence. That was the one of the original patio areas for the Bravo. They had one on each side of the, um, the building. The knee walls have since been removed. The brick pavers that were uneven and um, were, were damaged have been removed. We will pour back a new concrete patio. Um, Chipotle will uh, install the decorative fence that Julie mentioned a few minutes ago, along with a vehicle impact or protection device via bollards meeting the city's requirements um, if required. Uh, they do have seating for approximately 24 seasonal and that was shown on a floor plan. I don't know, Larry, if you're able to pull that up. Um, yes, I can. It's got to find it. Okay. So you don't have a problem with storing that furniture offsite in the winter? Julie can speak to this, but here's a floor plan. They have um, two, I think one or two closets within the space that they could store inside. Julie, you still there? Yes, sorry, that, that is correct. Um, we had mod we've modified the, the layout slightly from here, but we still maintain uh, a large storage area in the back of house, which if you scroll up a little bit on that PDF, you can see, um, yeah, it should be right there next to that little office uh, over to the right. Yep, right there. Uh, and that that's uh, plenty of space to store uh, both the umbrellas and the, um, the patio furniture. Thanks. Any questions relative to this CUP? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve with five conditions. Second. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Peterman. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cooper. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Hatton. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Okay, item five under new business. Architectural review of a restaurant at 7787 Reynolds Road. Go right ahead. Okay, Larry, if you can go back to the uh, color elevations. I think we talked about the drive-through. 
Um, so these are the, the elevations that we worked with Chipotle and Vocon on. Um, I want to highlight, I guess I'll walk through the changes from, and I, I know we looked at some pictures um, of the existing conditions today, but I want to walk through the changes that are proposed to the Chipotle side. The Mission barbecue side is existing as is shown in um, a little bit of a grayscale here, but um, on the building, we've raised the feature uh, at the main entry, which is the one in the middle, uh, to be the same height as the one on the north and the one on the, the south end, which is the Mission Barbecue. So that that feature today is maybe four or five feet shorter, and we've raised it um, so that it can be a, an architectural entry feature, and then it matches uh, the other features on the other two corners of the building. Um, on the north side, uh, which is the second elevation down, we extended and wrapped that hardy plank. So right now it, it ends at probably that first window. And I think that was one of the pictures that we were looking at earlier. So we've extended it to include the drive-through window so that we can have, and, and Chipotle's preference there is to have a, make that a feature, an architectural feature. So we've wrapped it and included it. The drive-through window, I think we talked about the man door that is also on that side of the building, um, and it's shown in note A7 or A2, um, right in the middle between the drive-through and the next window there, uh, will be filled in. Um, that's right there, Mary. That's where that we're just there. Um, regarding the colors, uh, we work closely with Chipotle to incorporate stain colors that complement the Chipotle brand as well as immediately adjacent tenant Miss and Barbecue. So the, the existing storefront and windows will remain as currently installed in a dark bronze anodized color. Any existing two-way windows that look into the kitchen or the back of the house will be replaced with spandrel glass. So um, the two windows to the left of your, there you go, those two, um, Larry would be, currently today they're two-way glass, they would be replaced with spandrel glass. And then there's two on the back of the building that, that are almost identical to these that face um, east. Yeah, the, I guess the sheets car wash. There they are. Those would be, those are back of the house. Those would be replaced with, the glass only would be replaced with spandrel glass. Um, uh, with respect to the colors, um, there should be, so the dark color is the color that, um, that Julie had mentioned, it's a knight's armor. And then the lighter color that you're seeing is what's a, a fog. And these are trademark dress colors that Chipotle uses. And Larry, I don't know if you have, we submitted uh, some color swatches or samples. I don't know if you're able to pull those up or if they show well. Oops. So those are the um, samples. They may not show well in a photo, um, but the knight's armor is a, is a charcoal gray, and then the fog is um, right between a, a white and ivory. Uh, if we go back to the elevation, uh, we introduced some decorative moldings at the um, where the brick and the hardy plank meet uh, to, to transition those materials. Uh, on the awnings on the building, um, we have a combination of decorative fabric awnings and light gauge metal knife type um, flat awnings. So they're shown on both the north and the west elevations. The light gauge knife awnings are traditionally utilized above windows and, or doors where Chipotle will propose future building signage. So with the main entry feature, the one in the middle, there's a an awning there um, just above the transom uh, and sometime in the future Chipotle will um, prepare signage drawings to hopefully incorporate some signage above that entry and then on the drive-through side um, same thing we've gone with two uh, knife type awnings above those both the drive-through window and then the um, full height window as well the other awnings that you see are a black fabric decorative awning. We've kept a, a very similar pitch to um, try to complement what was done at Mission Barbecue. 
Um, and those are shown both on the north and on the west elevations. Uh, we continued with the gooseneck lighting that was a, a trade dress at Mission Barbecue above their awning. So we've continued those along the Reynolds facing elevation and you see those above the three windows as shown. Um, let's see. I think that's um, all I had on the on the elevations as far as the building is concerned. Some of the materials and color samples um, and call outs are shown on the left side of this ele elevation, color elevation. And um, I think we can answer any questions that you have regarding the changes to the building. Mr. any questions for the applicant? I have one. The uh garbage in the back you share it with mission barbecue right correct well the doors have seen better days to say the least and i'd like to see the doors replaced and and have the uh, spring-loaded mechanism that keeps them closed i was there today and there it's it's just it needs replaced at this point is that something we can put in as a condition yeah i know that yeah i know at the time that we and i don't is that a picture of them I know that they got new boards on them when we did the Mission Barbecue, and because we were working with a couple of different tenants and didn't know if this trash enclosure was going to remain in its current location or if it was going to be relocated, depending on who the tenant, um, the co-tenant was. Yeah, we can, um, we'll certainly want to spruce that up and clean it up as, as there'll be um, more traffic that'll be um, viewing it and um, accessing it. So yes, that's no problem. And I can't stress enough the spring-loaded mechanism to keep them closed. Um, yes, we can look into that. I'm not familiar with that, but we can um, we can include that. And don't forget the landscaping. Got the landscaping. You want me to? Okay, if you want to go back to the site plan, let's touch on. So we um, and I know you, you mentioned the trees in the front we will get um i'll make sure that those get taken care of but then also we've included as you um traverse through the i guess the pickup lane on, on your left hand side where the clearance bar and some of the directional signage is we're showing a proposed plant bed and then there's um the grass in the back area and everything needs to be replanted and or reseeded or resodded so um we will take care of that as well I just I, I, let me just ask one question for clarification purposes on the elevations. So the lighter color the, is a plank. It's a pre-finished plank material for the, the the kind of towers on the corners. Yeah, some of it, a lot of it's existing. Um, so we're extending the main, the one in the middle, up about three or four feet. And then That's if right. you look on the left side, the other one maybe we're extending towards the, to the, the east, east. Yes. maybe. Um, and then we're changing, kind of flipping the colors that you see in this picture so the 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 main entry features is will go from the darker to the lighter and, and right. the brick will go from a lighter stain to a darker stain so and that's and i just want to clarify for everyone's understanding too that the dark brown that we see on the elevation is is brick masonry that you're staining dark, yes sir it's stained presently yes yes thank you Mr. Chairman, uh, to Mr. Varga's point earlier, you do show a proposed menu board, so I'm assuming that will not be shown on the final site plan. Um, can you go back? I don't, Julie, is that, was that all that we pulled off of an old, or is it just a welcome board or does it go away? Um, I, I, I believe that that, um, if it says menu board, that was a, a very early iteration of what used to be our our digital uh, pickup package. Um, so if it's not a directional signage, which we have at the front at that right in, right out, um, it, it, it will not be it will not be needed there. Sorry, that was a long way to say that no, you didn't take it out. <laughs> yeah. And then going back to the proposed paint striping between the two lanes there on the north, the drive through exit, I guess. Uh, if you do put a um, a raised curb there if you put your light pole in there are you going to provide a sidewalk or something for the people to uh walk from the north property line into the restaurant 
Yeah, we could do that. I mean, the other part of that is, do you want to be inviting people to be crossing through that lane where people are driving through? But yes, if that's the desire of the city. Do it. Yeah. If they park on the north side, they're going to probably do that anyway. Yeah. Yep. We can just turn it down and provide a crosswalk through there and a sidewalk through. Well, so there's no there's no access on the north side of the building, right? So they have to come to the front. Yeah, so they have to walk around and they have to walk around to the sidewalk between the patio and the parking, the pickup the parking area. So yeah, they're gonna have to cross that island. That's how they're gonna get to the front. So they'd have to come here and go. Right. There. So you're gonna need to add the uh, you know, pedestrian crossing uh signage or something there because it they will walk to get to the sidewalk that's adjacent to the patio to get to the front door they'll have to cut right across your pickup lane so you should stripe that as a crossing and put some signage up yeah so that does condition yeah we can we can do that that's easy you understand what i mean if you just extended that sidewalk over that island in a sense yeah, or, or we turn down the curbs on either side and you have a, something so, yeah, so that's, that's, where, that's where people are going to walk whether you yeah. want them to or not yep yeah that's fine we will show that in detail and then we can have signage um that for the people coming through the pickup lane that that denotes that there's pedestrian crossing the purposes of the of the record I recommend the correct verbiage for this condition uh, i would suggest provide pedestrian crossing from north side of building i walk in front of the patio does that work with proper signage with pedestrian striping across pickup lane yeah. it's because people are going to walk back that right in front of cars <laughs> anything else fellas um real quick two, two things um julie reminded me that they may on those spandrel windows that um that i mentioned there's two on the north side and two on the east elevation that they may want to introduce on the top portion of that some kind of filmed um um over the glass so they can introduce some natural light into the back of the house or into the kitchen julie do you want to expand on that um yeah and i and i apologize for uh it, it being such a uh a late conversation um yeah we did want to it, it's pretty dark back in that area and uh any amount of natural light helps we figured if we have the windows there um that it would be advantageous if we could do some sort of a frosted solid color uh, translucent film rather than a solid black spandrel panel. Kathy, do you have a problem with that? I'm going to defer to our local architect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, why don't you just make it a window, a window window? Well, there are certain elements of back of house conditions that uh, might be a little bit messy. Um, so, uh, and also we have, um, an office back there where you could potentially, you know, see into where we have a safe, um, you know, things like that. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, translucent film helps, you know, keep people from seeing inside, but we're still getting that, uh, diffuse light so, uh, so in there put, for our, our employees. You're, you're putting the film on glass, so it'll be glazed yeah. and you put film on the glass so that it's not, it'll be translucent, not transparent. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. And it'll look like the regular window. It'll look like the windows. The normal. Yeah. Window. All right. That's fine. And then I had one other comment or question about um, the con one of the conditions. Um, and I talked to Mr. Decker yesterday. Uh, I think item number three existing parking lot serving. All three tenants shall be repaired, surface mounted curb installed, and replaced with. And I told them that we, we there's improvements that need to be made behind uh, this building, and then on the what will be the the future Chipotle side. And, and we agreed that 
um, we did need to do that. Additionally, I think at Starbucks, we had um, repaved most, if not all that lot and a lot of the Mission Barbecue side, but um, I acknowledged with him that um, those improvements did need to be made and that I would work with him and his staff to um, ensure that those get done. Mr. Chairman, we also went out on the staff and took some photos. I think you saw uh, Larry went through those pretty quickly before, but uh, we did note that they had made some improvements. There is some areas like this that, that still need to be improved, but there are areas you can see where that sidewalk area has been repaved. Um, and, and so we definitely note that there have been, and some of the curbing has been repaired, but some still needs to be repaired. There's some broken curbing still in the back. Yeah, um, we're going to get rid of all that deck curbing. Okay. It, it's, it doesn't work anywhere, especially in Menor, when there's two or three feet of snow on the ground. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve with six conditions. Number five, replace garbage bin door and install a spring-loaded mechanism to keep the doors closed. And number six, sidewalk, pedestrian, pedestrian right. sidewalk through whatever Kathy said. I'm gonna make number seven, landscaping. Oh yes, so we're make number seven, fresh uh, street trees and landscaping and rear. Street trees along Reynolds, uh, landscaping and rear. Do we have to call out the menu board being removed too? No, no, you don't have any intention of doing that. So. that. Okay. That's fine. Sounds good to me. Okay, so that was uh, in second. When you're ready. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Haddon. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Are you, are you no, number one and number two here yet? Anita is here. Let's go back to that condition used to allow the Child Lake Air Center at 9397 and 9399 Menor Avenue. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Anita, go ahead. Good evening. Um, we're trying to propose to move into the DMT unit that is located in our plaza currently uh, to make additional room for the usage of school age children. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is anyone wishing to speak against? I did not see anyone wishing to speak either in favor or against this one. Thank you, Larry. So we'll close the public portion. Entertain any questions of the commission for the applicant or the administration. I have an initial question. Right ahead. Uh, to the applicant, uh, is this going to be a permanent facility or is this just temporary? This is temporary for the pandemic. As of right now, we have agreed on a six month uh, lease with the landlord and it would be going six months to six months. Okay. So Kathy, well, let me ask you this. What do we have to do at, at the end of the six month period, if anything? What do we have to do? Yeah, she says it's a six month deal. Mr. Miller, anything? There shouldn't be any reason to do that. They just, it'll obviously go quicker to expire after a year. But no problem so, be done by then. I'm sorry, what, what was the question? It was not a question. I just wanted to clarify on the lease agreement because right now we do not know as to what's going on with the school aged children and uh, our um, capacity has been uh, cut from 18 to nine. Um, and we don't know what's gonna happen once the schools reopen. Right now they're looking uh, and is to having children attend part-time and then do uh, homeschooling. So we'll still be providing care so we would be occupying um, month to month with a six month notice to our tenant that we are um, moving up, basically. 
Okay. okay, so we clarified the conditional use permit allows the use to go forward. That if, if, if that stops after six months, and whoever comes in next would have to get another whatever is required for that for that particular use. But the what you're looking at is we have a lot of projects that haven't been finished. It expires after a year. That would. Commissioners, any questions for the administration or the applicant? I have an addition, some additional, or just an additional question. Are you making any improvements to the interior of the space that's not already there? And I see restrooms and kitchen and an office. Are those already in place or are those being built now? So we are not, uh, um, we're not doing any construction and taking it as Sorry, we didn't catch any. I need to get breaking up. Of kids uh, in groups of nine. Okay. Uh, the, uh, we didn't get much of what your response was. Uh, the question is: Is the improvements that are shown, or the spaces that are shown on the floor plan that you presented, are those existing, all existing, or are you building any of those new? We're not. We're not getting. They are all existing. Okay. There you go. There we go. Thank you. Two conditions. Yes. One other comment for the um, applicant: How will you be uh, taking the children from that space to the um, outdoor play area? Will they be going from the back or the front of the building? Didn't hear you. They will be going from the back of the building. The back of the building, she said. Back of the building. We'll be going to the back of the building. Aren't there cars that go in the back of the building? There are. It's the UPS truck. Um, um, the waste management that comes to pick up the waste. Those usually are finished before 6 a.m. in the morning. What, what, what would keep you from from moving the, 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 the open spaces at the north end by your existing facility, right? Wouldn't it be safer if you just walked them on the sidewalk across the front of the building? We didn't hear any of that. Try again. Um, we do not have, we do not oppose walking them in the front. It is just quicker for them to walk through the back of the building. Now, I don't, I mean, in my opinion, and I see uh, another opinion, I think it would be safer to keep them on the pedestrian sidewalk in front of the building rather than walking them into uh, along a service drive with people driving from, from, you know. I'm on board with that. Okay, so we would, I would want to restrict you to keep the, the children only on the pedestrian walkway in the front of the building. Okay, that is fine. We can do that. All right. And is it new? Is this new facility equipped with an AED device? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Is this is this building equipped with an AED device? Or the original facility? Anita, are you there? Larry, what happened? She's still there. We just can't hear her. She's she's not muted or anything. Uh, I'm sorry. You want to make that a condition? Yeah. Okay. Let's make it a condition. We're gonna have four. Four conditions. 
Yes, on the, on the sign. Okay, I'll entertain a motion with four conditions. Number three being the AED device, and number four being the children walk on the pedestrian walkway to get to the playground. Mm -hmm. I second it. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Haddon. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Harry, number two, is he here? I do not see him here. Um, we do have a question though from Chipotle wanting some clarification on their approval. What's the clarification? Um, they wanted to know if it's acceptable, this clarification on if it's acceptable for the clearance bar and the patio railing to match the gray's armor, brick stain. Brick stain. So they want to go with the darker color. Sure. <laughs> sure, darker color is always uh, safe. Okay, I think that's what they wanted. Julie, did you get that? Yes. So Mr. Dellis is not here. Should we take no, no, he is not. Okay. What's that said for? We're not going to have a meeting between now and when he wanted to do this, so. Let me take a motion to table it. A motion to table? Second. And when Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Haddon. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Panel say plan of a multi tenant senior independent living and assisted living facility at 8180 and 8190 Manor Hills Drive. Okay, Gary, you, you and Matthew, you are both unmuted. Okay, so uh, you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, this is Gary Bialis with um, Senior Living. Um, so this is, uh, I've been in front of you before, preliminary site plan approval. Uh, I agree the notes of the staff report. I agree with all the notes. Um, and if you want to walk through the same plan or what's the proposal? Go ahead and walk through it. Okay. Um, as we before this meeting, this uh, uh, independent living. Gary, can you speak up a little bit? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. The, uh, you hear me now? Yes. Okay. This building consists of independent living, a three-story building, along with and assisted living, which is also a three-story building. Um, if you look at the plan that's up, the building to the left, which has a, a square footage, uh, that one, Larry, is the independent building, living building. Um, it. And again, it's three stories. There's a front entrance with a drop off canopy in front. Uh, it contains, there's, it contains uh, units as well as our dining area, swimming pool, exercise. It contains a lot of uh, community features. The building next to it, which is our memory care assisted with the building. It's a couple of three stories. There is a there is a memory here is that first floor. When you enter the building, there's also a drop off for this building. I think you come into the building and you are assisted with the block. And if you go to left, if you enter. You have a court reporter in there? Pardon? You have a court reporter with you? No, that's Larry. He needs to mute himself. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I maybe you had a piano player with no. you. <laughs> okay, that's much better. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So in um, the memory care is on the first floor. As you walk in the building, you will talk, and that's more of a lockdown 
restricted area to go, so you'll pass a desk and they will let you into memory care. There are two elevators in that building, two up to the second and third floor, which are the assisted living units. Both these air buildings, or both this, both uses have outdoor areas for, for the um, community to, to go into. They're separated, and the memory care one is a fence, so it is uh, enclosed. Uh, as you look at this plan, there are a lot of areas that are showing as detention ponds. Uh, those will all have fountains in them, and they're, they're needed for the uh, um, There's parking along the front of the building, as well as parking behind the building. We have Gary, I have a question for you. Yes. Under proposed conditions, number eight says, the details of the covered parking area shall be provided as part of the building permit application. What do you see as the covered parking? Uh, the, the plan for that, they didn't, uh, it would be covered and they, it, they'd be garages actually, individual garages. And the building materials would be comparable to the building? Exactly, yeah, and I'll submit that. I'm sorry for not doing it, but yes. Those are for permanent residents, presumably, correct? Oh yes, they're for the they're, they're for the residents. They actually have to reserve them, and there is a fee uh, for, for for reserving one. And, and those are in the the southeast corner of the site plan. Uh, in my yeah. Larry, can you blow that up? Yes, you blow it. Yeah. Yes, southeast corner. Yes. Okay, um, is there anything, I mean, we have other amenities that you can see. We have an outdoor patio for independent living and uh, pickleball and a putting green. Those are all features we have. And we also have a covered pavilion also in that back area that they sometimes serve dinner out there and have a uh, cookout. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you've you've shown us as part of the package uh, two architectural renderings. Yes. One showing the entry canopy, and the other one showing the, the long the, the I guess that would be the north elevation of the building. Correct. Are those accurate? Are yes, they are actually we're building this right now. It's not to that point, but those are accurate. So the materials, the colors. We yes. can depend on this rendering as uh, as accurate for your architectural proposal. Yes, I spent a lot of money to get an accurate render. Because it helps us. It helps us too to be able to. This we're, we we really do want to impress people when they drive up to our community, and I think this is impressive. Gary, do you have any problem with the nine stipulations under nine conditions? All conditions. I think I did. I'll look at them again. Real quick. Yes. Gary, would you expand on, I know there were some questions with regard to the Garfield Road access, and I know that's going to come up with the villas as well. There were some um, questions on the plans that you provided with regard to the, the uh, improved materials for that road and how that's coming along in terms of, I know you've had some issues with the easements over there. Well, can you just talk about that a little bit? And also the access is, is where, when that road comes in from Garfield and that enters down, um, it just provides some clarification. Are you going to need an easement on that other site? There, there, and I think I've submitted this one time for Larry. There is a, quite a few easements. Um, there, all along the front of the property along 90 is an easement. Uh, you know, right now, it's going all the way from I guess it's the city's road to the. There. Okay, thanks, Larry. <laughs> this is the east. You know, every the city fellows, those are easements. Okay, there is an easement, and this was from a vet who used to own the property from the Arkell Road, and it comes in the curve just like I show it, and then. 
will come down at a you know go it will go south and and then that will actually serve my villain but it but it will also you know be an access to my um, my community also so there's there's really no issue with with the easements but those are the easements that are out there but it's going to be it has to be an improved road i think there were some some of the some of the um documents indicated it was going to be um like some sort of gravel and and, and one showed a, a concrete we just want to ensure that it's going to be improved yeah it's going to be a paved road it's, i think that was a stipulation maybe but yeah it would be a 24 foot wide asphalt road that would be able to handle uh i'm not sure if it was yours or not seventy thousand pound Fire truck, I think I can ask for. But yeah, it will be a clean road. It will, it will not just be for fire trucks, probably. It will also be our second access point into our community. If, if people like to come from there. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? I just have one uh, clarification. Uh, you presented some documents here that show the uh, floor plans individually yes. and uh, elevations and such. And I just want to bring to your attention and maybe to the city's attention that all the references to direction north, yes. it's all, they're all wrong. <laughs> so uh, I'll these conditional, I didn't actually read that in the conditions. Okay, very good. So that just needs to be corrected on any final documents submitted to the city. There you go. Yeah, Gary, that required a lot of extra thought on our part. <laughs> well, I didn't catch it, so I, I feel bad that I didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, right, exactly. Is that a motion? Motion, well, yeah, motion. Motion to approve with 10 conditions, a 10th being a 24 foot asphalt road from Garfield. Okay. With 24 foot width. With. Second. And Mr. Right. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Head. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Gary, final site plan of senior independent living villas at Manor Hills Drive. Down. <laughs> Okay, and this plan, it's um, again, it's the villas that actually kind of support in a way our because we understand there'll be a lot of individuals that are not, they're, they're still at the age, they still want to have a private residence, say. These are, are um, that's the clubhouse. Uh, uh, that's the clubhouse. Can't hear you, Gary. It's a two bedroom, two bath unit. And they're different, uh, and, you know, there's some that are two, some are five, some are four. Uh, they all really look alike. I just want to be honest with you. The one, I didn't submit every foot of floor plan, but it, it, the way it works is it's just the same they got. As you can see, some of the units do have two cars garage versus one car garage. Um, as as we would build these, just let you know, we would, we would break the entire site and put utilities in. We would not build these. These are going to probably build in, in anywhere from three to four stages before we would be proposed to be building. And on this plan, you'll see, and we're, we're finalizing negotiations with Heartland regarding an, uh, the fire access that the fire department requested. Now, Heartland has requested that they, at their property line, they want a fence because they don't want people using this access only for fire, okay? And we would put a fence on our the gate, let's say, some kind of decorative gate on our side also because we don't want people driving down a road to go to that end. So that is a stipulation by Heartland. They don't want an access point, but only for emergency. Yeah. 
any comments? That, I know that was one of um, Chief Searle's um, uh, preferences. He really wanted to see this uh, emergency exit. So I, I know that, that uh, Gary's been working on it to make that happen. Uh, so we're, we're pleased with how he's proposing it. Well, just to let you know, Ar Ireland is very happy that we're here because we're not a uh, competitive use. We will actually provide, uh, unfortunately, provide um, them with more um, residents along the way. Let me ask you a question about this driveway with the, for fire access. If there's going to be two different gates, has the fire marshal signed off on the, the fact that he'd have to open up or unlock two different sets of gates to, to get from to, to be able to use this access? I know they're okay with the gate access. They haven't indicated they had any concerns um, with um, the number of gates that were proposed. Uh, and I know they're still working through it. So they won't sign off on this until they're satisfied with how it's, how it's presented. Okay. Another option, if, if they aren't happy with it, I could put some big signs from our properties that do not enter. Doesn't mean people won't enter, but I can definitely have big signs do not enter. What is your proposed 20 foot emergency access road made up? Oh, it will be asphalt. I know that it's cross hatch, but it will be asphalt. They'll be coming through an asphalt road as it is, just you know, through Heartland. You're gonna have an okay. asphalt road in between 36 and 37. Correct, yes. Any additional questions? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Motion we'll to approve with seven conditions. I'll second. second. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Barker. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Hadden. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Gary, it's taken forever. Hey, <laughs> forever, but it's done. Hope. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gary, we want to be invited to the, to the uh, grand opening. We get complimentary about. rooms, don't we? When we, <laughs> <laughs> we get complimentary rooms, don't we, for uh, down, down the road? I think my speaker cut off there. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> report. Thank you. This is only going to take about a half hour. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I, I got to leave the room for a minute. Uh, I just wanted to introduce, this will be formally discussed um, as long as you are agreeable to it. The, uh, at, at the next meeting, it'll be an agenda item for your review and recommendation. As you know, we have been discussing and, and going back and forth, some of you for years on this uh, issue of outdoor storage and display. And um, uh, this has been an item of interest for council as well. And uh, a couple members of council last year had um, had asked our law director to look into this to some extent and, and he did and then he passed it on to the administration. And um, we've, we've spent a considerable amount of time researching this uh, particular topic uh, to get it to where we think uh, will be um, a good working document with with the proposals that we've seen. Um, I know in my short time here, but also uh, collectively over the years uh, with some of the proposals, uh, not only with storage, but displays, um, also collection bins. And we want to address um, a new popular item that I don't think is going to go away, but these, these lockers uh, that are being presented and proposed by the likes of UPS and Amazon. Um, we've been receiving a lot of requests for these. So I uh, forwarded this information to you just to give you a head start on looking at it. And uh, we'll go into more detail with it um, at the next meeting. And there's some supplementary definitions that support it. And as with any zoning 
text change that goes kind of have the domino effect. So we had a, an additional uh, change to the beginning of this chapter, which is chapter 1161. But we'll talk about it in more in, in depth at the next meeting. Just out of curiosity, did anything ever shake with that bin that was supposed to go on a Lowe's property? Yes, it's, uh, the, the uh, well, the, the the brick wall was completed on the Lowe's property. There's been some delays with the Home Depot property, but we've actually been in touch with them last month, and it shouldn't come as a surprise, but there was another change in management. So we kind of had to um, reintroduce what was approved last year, and that's getting, um, that's. But the Lowe's brick wall is in compliance with what last year. So that should now cover the mulch area. That's all I have. Guys? Kathy, what? What's the problem with the current language? It's pretty stringent that that we're striking out. So what does the new language offer that the current one doesn't? Well, it, it, it just goes into more detail. Uh, the, the current language is about, a, is about a paragraph long and it says that, it, you know, it, it talks about if there's something that's being proposed within the, um, the front setback of the building it has to be approved per development plan. We've gone in and, and explained in more detail the different types of scenarios that we encounter and that we get proposals on with regard to outdoor display and how we want to see these displayed. I guess the best example is the latest proposal we received from Petiti. Um, we don't just want a temporary makeshift display area. They've now created a permanent um, expanded outdoor storage area with proper screening that will be there year round and that's what we want to see. so you know when, when you read this like you know page three talks about those areas we want to see a permanent screen we don't want them to just throw mulch bags out outside uh, for a period of time so that we have to wrestle with it for three months every year we want to see something that they acknowledge is a you know a permanent part of their site that if they need it to be dedicated then they need to properly screen and offer it so that's that was what was the attempt to be made here is is to better outline and, and so there's no it's it's hopefully going to take out the guesswork when somebody comes to you guys that look you've got to do a b and c in in, in order to, to do this type of storage if you don't then it's not meeting the code and if they don't meet the code then well, their only other option is is to vary it. So, it it, it again it it creates more guidelines for both the applicant and the administration and the when you receive an application. Because now they would get a code violation, and if they were going to do any of the structural work, they'd have to come through planning, we do a review of it, and that's still all going to happen anyway, right? It's going to happen, but now it gives guidelines. Now it's telling it's a, it's them. It's more of a guide of what you need to build. Mm -hmm. You still need to build it. Right. You can't store it. And, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Right. We've had these issues. But. Right. You know, you, you reminded me of when you mentioned Petites. They, they did do that, what we asked them to do. However, the last time I was there, they had a bunch of mulch and big, big containers of dirt bags. I don't know what it was all stacked on the south outside of the fence. They're not done yet. Oh, so maybe that maybe right. that's the reason. Okay, but there was a substantial amount of product outside the fence. So. Eight dollars. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved.